I think it's important to define well-being for yourself and then start to define well-being in your community. We travel to the future and, and we, we imagine, okay, what if uh, we do everything right from now on? Um, by unleashing the power of imagination, you, you say, okay, we can do this better, so let's work for it. This is the Green On The Go podcast, where we talk about keeping travel sustainable. And for today's episode, I'm joined by sustainable travel expert, Marco Lucero. So hi, Marco, and welcome to the Green On The Go podcast. How are you today? Thank you. Yeah, very good. Very good indeed. Thank you. Good. How are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Very well. If you could, um, if you could just tell all the listeners where you're um, talking to me from and uh, a little bit about yourself and your background. Hmm. Uh, I'm in Santiago de Chile at the moment. Um, I grew up here and um, well about my background I, I studied a little bit of uh, business and administration but then I, I got freaked out on how business was was taking over my life and I, I didn't that path to go further so I, I traveled into Australia to pretend that I was going to study English but but instead I went and did a course of permaculture which is sustainable defines thinking and that changed my life and that brought me into sustainable tourism. Oh, wow. So how long were you living in Australia for? Uh, well, that time was one year. I, I, I went away and then I came back and studied um, ecotourism administration here in Chile. But then I went back again and, and I was living there for three, almost four years. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Amazing. Do you think you'd ever go back? Would you ever go back to live in Australia? I, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. yeah. Who knows? A beautiful place. <laughs> you never, you never uh, get to know it all because it's such a big country, that just a continent. So yeah, I'll yeah. definitely have to come back to visit some places. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, you saying you said that you know you study permaculture and that's what led you to sustainable mm-hmm. tourism. But was there was there a point in your life that sort of really inspired you to work within this industry? Is there a key point when you suddenly thought? this is where I need to put my energy into. I've got a passion for it. And, you know, what inspired you to work within the sustainable tourism industry? Yeah, I think it definitely was permaculture in some way because I was traveling myself. I was a traveler. Um, and, I, and I realized how much I love traveling and how, how important it is to travel, to get to know different people, to share ideas, to... to reflect with other people, to create spaces where you can um, listen, which is so important, and uh, to see different points of view of how the world is and our relationship with the world. Uh, So while traveling uh, and and also while studying permaculture, I I decided that uh, tourism was a very good tool if you want to protect a place to protect the culture of a place um, and so I decided to come back and study uh, ecotourism administration because I saw tourism as a, as a tool to to protect and to improve the well-being of, of uh, territories and people and nature. Yeah I think this is a really great point because you know tourism can get quite a bad rap mm. when it comes to environmental issues obviously the issue with you know, carbon footprint and flying and everything like that. But actually, there is a po- there's a really positive side to tourism, um, and it does need to be protected. And I've spoken to guests on this podcast about how, you know, over the lockdown period, um, you know, wild wildlife conservation suffered because the money wasn't being poured into those areas in order for them to protect the wildlife. You know, from poachers and uh, and the like, um, you know, people were losing their jobs. You know, so it, it it is a very important part of our world. We just yeah. need to do it right. <laughs> Absolutely, we just need to be more mindful about how we're doing it. Absolutely, and I I think we we took a, a lot about the positive impact of tourism. Of probably in the news for the I don't know for the last thirty years, we've been talking how amazing is tourism as an industry. But uh, in reality, we also now that has uh, some costs uh, as, as the Travel Foundation calls uh, the burden of tourism or the, the invisible burden of tourism. Uh, and, and I think I think it's also important to talk about both both sides, you know, the cost and also the benefits. Uh, I, and I think we, we've been talking too much for 30 years 
uh, too much about the benefits and we also need to focus on the costs, uh, but not forget that uh, tourism is a tool uh, and as every tool, you can you know do something positive or do something extremely negative is the way you use it. So yeah, yeah I think absolutely. It's to, to look the big picture of it. Mm. There's all there's two sides to every story, isn't there? And it's about getting finding balance. That's what we're we're, we're just trying to do find balance. Absolutely. Um, yes. Now I know that most recently you co-founded, and this is where I'm not going to be able to pronounce it, so I'm going to say it in English, and then you're going to tell me <laughs> the translation. But in English, it's uh, translated as the caretakers of destinations. Um, so if you could tell us a little bit about this project, a little bit about, and also, you know, what it's actually, if you could translate yeah. it how it's meant to be said because I've tried and I've butchered it and you'll be able to say it much better than me <laughs> so Cuidadores de Destinos is, a, a, <laughs> is a, a company that I co-found with with uh, friends and, and professionals from the travel and tourism industry in in Chile uh, we created this company uh, during the pandemic so in March 2020 we start talking about it we used the opportunity of uh, tourism uh, not being able to, 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 to produce, to act, uh, um, to reflect. So first of all, we created a space of reflection. Uh, and I think that word is very important for us uh, ref to reflect. And we have a, a bi biologist and, and philosopher in Chile called Humberto Maturana, who, who passed away recently. He, he said that to reflect is to let go one's certainties. And that's what we did about tourism. So we let go many certainties that we had about tourism. We reflect on them, we look up on them. Uh, we, we analyze what are the paradigms behind those ideas? Why did we believe and said that, uh, we, we said something that Turismo was the industry without uh, without chimeneas, without burning, I don't know how do you call these things from a uh, big industry that- uh, Chimneys. Smoke. Chimneys, yeah. Smoke, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so, so in Chile, we, we said that Turismo was the, the industry as sin chimenea, but in reality, as, as we all knew, uh, and from, from the um, paper on, on nature in 2016, we knew that tourism um, um, emits 8% uh, of, of global, um, greenhouse emissions. So uh, we reflect, we created this space and we decided to create a company. Uh, and we also thought that probably the most necessary thing to do, especially in Chile and South America, is to put our energy into destination management and to facilitate that process, process and accelerate it into a, a destination framework that puts the needs of residents and nature at the center of the of its management, uh, something that is not happening yet in Chile at least. We're still thinking of our management plan uh, with the visitor at the center without taking into account uh, residents and nature. So we are uh, a company uh, that accelerates this process. Um, so what we do is we work with small destinations, actually with municipalities, uh, and, and we help them to bring residents and to bring nature into the table and to think uh, 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 a way that the, the destination management plans uh, could put the needs uh, uh, of them at the center. And that changed the whole paradigm of tourism. So uh, because the purpose has changed, the purpose is not longer to bring more and more visitors, uh, but it's to improve the well-being of the territory, of the destination. So that changes everything. That changes the management, the management plan, the um, the marketing plan, and, and everything around it. Yeah, so, so could of quality over quantity, I guess. Absolutely, yes. And how has it been received? How, is, have, you, how have your ideas been received by the destinations? Are they all for it? Do they love the idea? Or are they thinking, no, we want to get as many tourists in as possible and bring the money in? I think there's been, it's been definitely a, a shift into uh, thinking not only short-term, but long-term for, for tourism. Uh, they, they've seen that the model of just thinking short-term doesn't work for, um, and, and you get the residents complaining and, and you get some, some you know, tourism phobia happening. Um, um, and, and 
yeah, our, our workshops are uh, definitely a space for for people to to get together, reimagine what the tourism can done can can do for the destination. Uh, because people in a destination have different points of view. Uh, you get people, um, you know, uh, some, some, sometimes companies don't don't align with the residents' needs. Uh, but if if you uh, ask them what would they like to to for the future of the destination uh, and that is what we do in, in our one of our workshops that is called memories of the future we travel to the future and and we we imagine how, how would it be if if we do everything right uh, for the destinations for the next next 10 years and we all agree the same thing we all want the same things for the for the destination we all want something sustainable uh, uh, the well-being of the residents uh, are, are good and 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 um, yeah, a, a very good economy for the for the tourism companies. Um, so when you set the purpose of the of tourism, uh, you have an idea of what do you want from tourism. Then you can align everything: your management, your marketing plans, and everything is involved in the process as well. So. Uh, our work for the year and a half that we, we we have as a company has been extremely successful. We are very happy with it. And also the people that has been working with us at our destinations are very, very happy. And it also gets very emotional as, as well because to give the opportunity to reimagine a beautiful future in such a chaotic time, it gives, gives you um, the will to do things, to say, okay, hope. Let's, let's work, yeah, it gives you hope. Let's work for it. And uh, even, even though we probably don't agree on everything, we all want the best for this place. So mm. let's work together. And, and that's been a great, great experience. We, we, what we do is to facilitate a, a place for democracy, uh, which has, hasn't happened before. Yeah, I think it's a really great idea. I love that idea of, you know, imagining the world that we're going to be in 10 years time and where they want to be, because if, if, you know we keep going the way we're going there's not going to be these beautiful destinations to travel to no one's going to mm. want to come to your hotel if the beach is covered in plastic right mm. so <laughs> we have to work together in all you know yes it's fine to get the tourists in in their herds now but if it affects the future then you're you're not going to have tourists coming in 10 years time so I think it's a really great idea and I love this idea of these these workshops you've been um you've been talking about as well you know it sounds yeah, like they're really really working we call unleashing the power of imagination uh, uh, because yeah because we, we we've been so much thinking about how terrible things will be and we don't even want to act on it so um, by unleashing the power of imagination you you say okay we can do this better. We can imagine a beautiful future, a wonderful future. So let's work for it. And and, yeah. and that that's been an amazing experience for us. Yeah. Now now uh, now this is this is actually was was where I first heard about the work that you're doing. It was from uh, Ben, who works at the Travel Foundation. He recommended I speak to you because he was talking about these KPIs that you use, you know, and to unleash the power of imagination. And I know that you've got a bunch of them that are quite unique to you and they they really just they're really eye-opening and I've got a few of them written down here you've, you've got um so the percentage of local children who play in a public space percentage of ambient audio that belongs to bird songs percentage of people I know by name on my street percentage of bird species that I can name in my habitat percentage of people who greet each other on the street amount of onces which is a Chilean tea time that I have um, weekly yeah. how do you say that <laughs> On, um, onces. onces ah okay onces um young people returning home after migrating for a little while um percentage of local people who enjoy the tourist attractions of the habitat and percentage of meaningful interactions that i have with visitors so you know this these, these are great and you know it's not about money at all none of this is about money it's about experience isn't it and quality of life so how did you come up with these KPIs and um yeah what what kind of brought you to think think in this way hmm. um there is a concept in Mapuche culture uh there is called buen vivir oh, and it's translated their well-being and and 
so we want to define what 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 does it mean? What does it mean to live well? Uh, in, and for tourism, what does it mean to have a good tourism? Does it, does it mean more tourists, more money, more staying? Probably it does, but that's not the full picture. It also means, uh, well, what about, let's, let's measure some things that we think that are important. And so by, by, by creating these KPIs, we, we gave, uh, we opened eyes for municipalities to start measuring different things and to ask residents, what does it mean the well-being for them? Uh, and then, so we, we came up with, with, with this KPIs to unleash the power of imagination and to say, okay, let's create a future that we want and let's make a plan and let, let's measure those things that we, we think that are, means the well-being for us. Um, two destinations will have definite different KPIs. So one will be focusing on art and culture, and this one will be uh, focusing on you know, protecting nature and more activities um, outside. Uh, uh, but, but yeah, we, we need to redefine how we measure the success of tourism. And with these KPIs that we call wonderful KPIs, we want to unleash the power of imagination so municipalities, residents can define what success means, what well-being means, and let's start measuring it. Mm, yeah, because the same, this is a, sustainable tourism is, is obviously as much about, you know, the well-being of the environment, but also the well-being of the people as well. And Absolutely, you know, yes. Well-being is a word that can very easily just be thrown around but it's but it's super important and you know i love i love the one it's like percentage of ambient audio that belongs to bird song i mean that's that's beautiful and how 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 often do we just stand there and listen and and think actually how how much bird song can i hear and how much should i be hearing mm. and or how much do, of it do we take for granted now and in 10 years time if it wasn't there would be suddenly really miss it without realizing um, which, which of the KPIs is, is sort of most important to you? I think that one is very important because it means how, how connected to nature I, I, I am. I am. Uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that's one of my favorites. Um, I think uh, there's few that probably there are not there, <laughs> but it has to do with, with uh, how do I perceive well-being for myself? So. Uh, the amount of books that I read mm, in a week or monthly. Um, so I think it's important to define well-being for yourself and then start to define well-being in your community. And, and yeah, I, I think that one, the, the bird songs are such a beautiful concept that uh, connects us to our surroundings. And yeah, I think that one could be my yeah. favorite. Yeah, it's it definitely the one that stood out for me the most because it was so simple, but it actually meant so much. Um, so do you do you have any advice for our listeners who want to book a sustainable trip and you know, how to do it, what to look out for? Um, and yeah, from your experience, if, if someone said to, to you, you know, I want to travel better, I want to book my next yeah. holiday and, and do it more meaningfully, then what would be your advice to them? I think there are two key points. And I'll say uh, the first one is emissions. We need to reduce our emissions with, with our carbon emissions. So that should be our priority. Uh, let's see how much emissions are we going to emit in this trip. And let's compare it to a different trip and a different means of transportation. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll start by asking myself, okay, how, how much I'm going to emit comparing some trips? And then um, how much money it'll stay in the destination? I think that's a very, very uh, KPI for your own trip as well. Um, if most of your, the money stays with companies that are going to take the money out of the destination and you are only going to leave the costs, uh, that's probably not not so good. So if you can if you can find places where the, where you can make sure that the money is going to stay in a local destination, so they can you know 
uh, improve the destination and, and it'll help them to, to their own well being. Um, I think those are two key points that I always ask myself when, when I'm going to, on a trip first emissions. Uh, how can I, you know, reduce the amount of emissions that I'm going to emit? And second, how much money is going to stay in the destination? How I can choose those companies that are going to leave the money that I'm spending in the destination? Yeah, I, I think that's such a good one because I, I ask this question to a lot of my guests, actually. And uh, and that one has come up in a different way, but actually just the, I think you've put it really simply and it really makes total sense. Every time you go to eat somewhere or every time you you know mm. or before you even have got to the station when you're booking your hotel or everything mm. thinking that at the forefront of your mind where is the money going next mm. is it going to you know a local farmer who's who's made the food or, or you know who's grown the food or or is it going to a great big mm. you know restaurant who that started in America and has ended up over yeah. there and it's such a it's such an important one and um you know we we uh, I, I sort of always say this that we vote with our wallet don't we we choose what we want with the money that we spend absolutely um, that's our vote mm. yeah and it's and so doing this when we're traveling always thinking right I want to keep my money within this destination it's like a challenge it's quite a fun challenge to almost set yeah. yourself isn't it you know mm. how much and you're always going to get the best through the best experience because it's absolutely <laughs> local yeah absolutely have the best stories to come back with it and the best experiences and no I think that's such such great a great one really really great advice um so so what's so where you know you've only been running the company now for a year and a half obviously and it started in the pandemic so it's the world is changing rapidly still um where are you hoping to see it in the you know the next year two years where, where where's where's the next what's the next kind of plan for it uh well, I, I wish for our company to not exist. Right. <laughs> which yeah, means, okay, interesting. <laughs> which means that uh, every dest destination management organization in South America uh, puts the needs of residents and nature at the center. So I, I wish for us to not exist as soon as possible because we need that. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll be working in Chile and hopefully around South America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amazing. yeah amazing and what a great honest answer you know to say actually the, the 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 goal is that no one needs you anymore that is the ultimate goal that we the, that no one needs that advice everyone is you know living in this balanced world and everyone is kind of on the same page uh so yeah no really fascinating stuff um so if anybody wants to find out a little bit more about what you do um you know where can they find you online social media handles I, websites. yeah I, I think for english english uh, uh, listeners it'll be hard to to find us because our, our website is, is in spanish but probably we should um put the our link into um you know the, your, your yeah we'll put it in the podcast. notes yeah yeah in the notes. absolutely yeah. but it's cuidadores de destinos .com, uh, and you can also find us on, on instagram as well or linkedin Okay, amazing, amazing. Yeah, I'll put all the information in the notes so anyone can find you. Um, absolutely. And uh, yeah, really, really fascinating speaking to you today, Marco. Thank you so much. And um, thank you. I wish you the best of luck with everything. And uh, in, this is a weird thing to say, but I, I, I hope that the company isn't here in a few years' time. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, obviously, that you know, for, for all good reasons. <laughs> absolutely, yes. yes. We also have time to rethink about our operations, rethink about uh, our future practices and uh, maybe focus on a better future.